Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kerr. Today's poem is by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, an American poet who lived from 1807 to 1882. You probably remember his works like Paul Revere's Ride, The Song of Hiawatha, and Evangeline. And you might know that he was also the first American to translate Dante's Divine Comedy. The poem that I'm going to read today is called The Fire of Driftwood. It's a little bit long, uh, longer than most poems that I read on the show, so I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. This is how it goes. We sat within the farmhouse old, whose windows looking o'er the bay gave to the sea breeze damp and cold an easy entrance night and day. Not far away we saw the port, the strange, old-fashioned, silent town, the lighthouse, the dismantled fort, the wooden houses, quaint and brown. We sat and talked until the night descending filled the little room. Our faces faded from the sight, our voices only broke the gloom. We spoke of many a vanished scene, of what we once had thought and said, of what had been and might have been, and who was changed and who was dead. And all that fills the hearts of friends when first they feel with secret pain their lives thenceforth have separate ends and never can be one again. The first slight swerving of the heart that words are powerless to express and leave it still unsaid in part or say it into great excess. The very tones in which we spake had something strange. I could but mark. The leaves of memory seemed to make a mournful rustling in the dark. Oft died the words upon our lips, as suddenly from out the fire built of the wreck of stranded ships the flames would leap and then expire. And as their splendor flashed and failed, we thought of wrecks upon the main, of ships dismasted that were hailed and sent no answer back again. The windows rattling in their frames, the ocean roaring up the beach, the gusty blast, the bickering flames, all mingled vaguely in our speech. Until they made themselves a part of fancies floating through the brain, the long-lost ventures of the heart that send no answers back again. O oh, flames that glowed, O oh, hearts that yearned, they were indeed too much akin the driftwood fire without that burned, the thoughts that burned and glowed within. <clears throat> so this is a poem with 12 quatrains, 48 lines, each, each quatrain, each stanza being four lines. And there's a, uh, each stanza has an A, B, A, B rhyme scheme. And so this is a poem about you know, old friends gathering together, reminiscing. And it certainly has a melancholic uh, tone to it. I wish I knew when this poem was written because I know that Longfellow's wife, oh man, I think his second wife died after her dress caught fire and, and she was burned very badly. And so I wonder if, that that was mm, 30 years before 20 or 30 years before his own death and i wonder if this was written after that because this concept of of fire would have certainly been something uh meaningful and and um traumatic for longfellow but i don't know offhand exactly when um this poem was written but i was thinking about how you know the other day i read a poem called autumn chant by Edna St. Vincent Millay. And I talked about the sort of cadence of that poem. And this poem, in some ways, has a similar cadence um, that I think is, is really suits the concept of people sitting around a fire. We have the rhyme scheme, the, you know, the, the, the ABAB rhyme scheme, the sort of repeated patterns of that. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a chanting nature to that. Um, it's got a tetrameter. There's, it's um, four measures each line. So it's, it's this very repeatable very easily spoken pattern if, that that is um, mirrors the way an in, an incantation might happen. 
And that's, that, that sort of speaks to me of the concept of looking back at memories and, and um, trying to bring them forth again, even though you know that they can't really be brought forth. That's the sort of um, effect that, that this poem has on me, that, that those formal choices have on me. I think that's a really nice, nice bit of um, using a very traditional, um, fairly simple, fairly common form in English in a way that is um, profoundly tied to the themes of a poem. So I think that's, that's why this poem probably has, has lasted and been anthologized here and there. So one more time, I'll read it again. This is Longfellow's The Fire of Driftwood. We sat within the farmhouse old whose windows looking o'er the bay gave to the sea breeze damp and cold an easy entrance night and day. Not far away we saw the port, the strange old-fashioned silent town, the lighthouse, the dismantled fort, the wooden houses quaint and brown. We sat and talked until the night descending filled the little room. Our faces faded from the sight, our voices only broke the gloom. We spake of many a vanished scene, of what we once had thought and said, of what had been and might have been, and who was changed and who was dead. And all that fills the hearts of friends when first they feel with secret pain their lives henceforth have separate ends and never can be one again. The first slight swerving of the heart that words are powerless to express and leave it still unsaid in part or say it in too great excess. The very tones in which we spake had something strange I could but mark. The leaves of memory seemed to make a mournful rustling in the dark. Oft died the words upon our lips, as suddenly, from out the fire built of the wreck of stranded ships, the flames would leap and then expire. And as their splendor flashed and failed, we thought of wrecks upon the main, of ships dismasted, that were hailed and sent no answer back again. The windows, rattling in their frames, the ocean roaring up the beach, the gusty blast, the bickering flames, all mingled vaguely in our speech until they made themselves a part of fancies floating through the brain, the long-lost ventures of the heart that send no answers back again. O oh, flames that glowed, O oh, hearts that yearned, they were indeed too much akin, the drift would fire without that burned, the thoughts that burned and glowed within. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. Be back tomorrow with another poem for you. 